We probably should explain what the Uzai is because... What, people don't know? No, we're, we're, we're the podcast for, for the layman. Do you know what I mean? The we're, Uzai. This, this is, we don't just have Gus Lopez listen to this thing. Well, do we have to explain who that is too? <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna wind up going down some some serious sarlacc holes here, but uh, well, the Uzai is a line of Turkish bootleg Star Wars figures. I guess they came out relatively soon after the original line. Uh, uh, apparently, for whatever reason, you couldn't get legitimate licensed Star Wars figures in Turkey for some reason. I mean, I guess Palatoy did the European. It was it was a British company that licensed the Kenner stuff, mm. and I guess they distributed it through throughout Europe. But for whatever reason, it didn't make it. To, to Turkey, and so some intrepid toy company took it upon themselves to just copy the figures, and they called it Stars War Uzai. I had a Turkish friend of mine translate what Uzai means, but I forgot. And uh, and they and they sort of did a line of figures, and they all had very peculiar names, like the Royal Guard was done. They changed all the colors, you know, like the sto- the Snow Trooper was blue, called the Blue Star with yellow eyes yeah and then they had the headman which was like the imperial royal guard without the cape and he had like a i think it was a clash of the titans shield or something and that's one of the most sought after ones and then they had the death star gunner which is the famous one where they have the the packages are ridiculous because instead of showing us still from the movie it's just a picture of the figure itself in some sort of action pose and the death star gunner is like running this big control panel and it's actually just a <laughs> calculator and uh, people people collect these things on their own not as a substitute for a Star Wars figure but just as a as a thing unto itself and then if you really want to go down the hole there's like Mexican bootlegs Polish bootlegs um, bootlegs from all over the world that just take on these bizarre shapes and forms and I'm, I'm definitely inspired by that in my, in my own work and especially because uh, the quality of these things don't always hold up so if you're making a bootleg toy you know you only have to try like 65 percent of the time you know to get it right and and you've succeeded so works in that way but that's what the uzai figures are i one of the like i love japanese star wars toys like i just i just find the detail and they just do it i get this extra level and kubrick they did like official licensed Kubrick versions, like the little yeah, of, did a, of a, a the Uzar. Yeah, they did. Well, because it's it's found its way into the lexicon. You know, it's like as far as you know, Star Wars collecting goes, especially at that time, because those figure w- in the so-called dark ages of Star Wars, when there was nothing new coming out, and you know, collectors like Steve Sansweet or whatever um, had had everything. So you needed, if you needed more shit, I mean, you have to feed your habit. You know, collecting is sort of a weird addiction for some people, and they needed stronger and stronger stuff, and that was the place to go because those, you know, those those were uh, uh, that was uncharted territory. In fact, a friend of mine, Lev from uh, Toy Tokyo, a famous toy store here in in uh, New York, was one of the first guys to actually bring the Uzai figures to America, and he tells this fantastical story about how he had a ride up a mountain on the back of a camel to get up to this factory where all these stashes of Uzai figures were and he br- and you know he had to do this, bribe all these customs officials to get them out of the country and it was like uh it was just a a really uh weird story about how how far he had to go to get this shit and I think that's what makes bootleg collecting interesting to people is that it's not it's not just the object itself it's the 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 adventure of finding it yeah, and you. There was one that you had last night, which was a pack of what was that? The superpowers one. Sense of right. Sense of right, and it was like it's Shrek, Batman, Spider Man, Superman, and a Power Ranger. Power Ranger and Lightning McQueen from Cars, all on this sort of imaginary super team called the Sense of Right. Not a conviction of right, mind you, just a sort of a sense of it. Just a vague... Yeah, a vague sense of it. A gist yeah, of correctness. gist of correct. <laughs> I'm actually going to make that. Gist of correct? Yeah, that's yeah, good. I'm going to actually write that down. Okay. Anyway, we recorded it, by the way. Go on. Thanks for watching. To hear our near two-hour audio podcast with a suck lord discussing the art of toy bootlegging in New York City's Chinatown, hit 
Steel Wars episode 160, available on iTunes, steelwars.com, or your podcast app of choice. There's a link for it right here, or check out our other videos. And if you want to chat, I'm always replying in the comments below. May that force be with you.